chickens, chickens are so fun. Chickens, chickens on the run. Chickens, chickens in my hair. Chickens, chickens everywhere. <laughs> oh, what a deal, what a deal. Hey guys, it's Jax. And I've got a problem. That was pretty good. Maybe put it to some uh, music, make a song. Well, what you got under there, Rhonda? Anything? Nothing? You just hanging? Oh, she laid an egg. Okay, we've survived so far. We're on day one, two, three, four. I don't know, I've lost track, but we're doing great. Kids are doing great, chickens are doing great, and they're about to get a whole lot better, and that's what we're up to right now. The cold snap passed by us, the weather has modulated things are going good cabin's going great all these calves have survived everything's a1 ship shape bada bing baby bada boom we found a little time we got chores done to go get this chicken coop that i mentioned earlier here's the deal i traded for this chicken coop there's an amish community about an hour and something south of here and they needed some hay a couple years ago and so uh Old man Rooster made a deal with him and I made a deal with him where uh, we hauled the hay down and just gave him the hay and then I trucked it down and we said we'd just trade for some stuff later on, okay? We were gonna trade for some house stuff. They, we actually met these guys originally, they were roofing our house and uh, they do a little horse training for us and a few things. So Rooster's trading a little horse training and uh, I'm trading my truck and, and uh, maybe I'll steal some of Rooster's hay value too but to get a chicken coop because this beautiful greenhouse of mine has been pooed on by all these chickies. <laughs> Everywhere you look, these chickens are just like, oh yeah, hey, here's an egg. Ooh, here's a poo. Chickens are great. They're great. But man, are they messy. My goodness. You know, we kind of had them ranging out this last summer and they go down there by the house and they get into everything and they peck everything and they peck your little plants and your flowers and they just, they're a little, you know, yeah, they lay the eggs and that's great, but they can get a little bit, uh, little, little, so anyway, we got this chicken coop. I'm really excited to see. They just said, I said, just hook us up with the greatest Amish chicken coop that you would use. That's what they did. Reba, you excited? <laughs> anyway, Haley's always wanted chickens and it's great. These finally grew up. They survived the summer and they're laying eggs now like wild and it's good. But we're gonna get this chicken coop and uh, probably set it up right out here. It's about the same size as this greenhouse and we can get the greenhouse back to greenhousing because it won't be long until we can start uh, putting some seeds down here. Be another, I don't know, five weeks, probably six weeks and we can get some stuff rolling. So, thanks Rhonda. Oh, she laid two eggs. That old girl, what a sweet. Oh, and that, they're hot as a pistol. It's great. <laughs> Hot eggs. <laughs> anyway, so let's go along. We're gonna take uh, we're gonna take Army. We're gonna take Bama. Leaving Lash and Fred. They're gonna do some uh, some major house chores while we're gone, uh, and uh, we'll just rick rock and roll. All right. Hey, Bammy. What? Where are we going? Roundup. What are we gonna do in Roundup? Eat eat sheets. <laughs> We're gonna eat treats in Roundup? Yeah, we're gonna, we gonna have treats. Okay, I'm thinking we're gonna go get the chicken coop. Do you want us to leave you to eat treats while we go out and get the chicken coop? No, we're gonna buy treats. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Marnish? What? You coming along ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, Nooch, we need to get some straps. Uh, look underneath this board. I think I saw one there a while ago. Bammy, lift that board up. Nooch, what's there, buddy? Oh yeah, bring that. We definitely need that. You can uh, put it on the step here. Now let's go in the shop and see if we can find another one. I'd show you what is right here, but I don't want to reveal this secret quite yet. That's coming in a later video. All right, kiddos, come look in this box. Dig around here, is there any big straps? I'm not sure where they're at. 
Is that a ratchet strap or just a regular strap? That's just a regular one, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's keep looking. Let's go back the other way. I'll tell you more about those guys sometime. <laughs> You're super strong. I believe it. Take that to Grandpa's pickup. Look in Grandpa's shop and see if you can find any ratchet straps. Oh, guys, come look. Do you see them? I spy with my little eye a couple things that are yellow. Yep, climb right up there, buddy. Oh, boy. Reach right back there. Give me that one. You have to be real strong, buddy. These turnover balls. I think there's some cruddage down in there we gotta dig out. Hey Bam, what's your favorite question to ask? I have one to ask her, who's girl? Mom and Daddy. And Grampy? And not Bianchi. Oh man, who's kisses? Mom's and Dad's. Really? Yeah. Alright. What about for old Grandpa? No, not kisses for Bianchi. None? None. Oh, nine. Man. She said nine. Oh, nine kisses, nine kisses for, Grampy. for Grampy. That's pretty good. That's quite a few kisses. Nope. They didn't make it 15 minutes down the road. We just come down here to fuel up and then we're headed south. We're getting close to our turn. They said to watch for the, uh, there's an old tree that was struck by lightning split in half. Take a right at the split tree, go a mile to the old stump. Take another right and then go left where the moon meets the sun, whatever that means. So, I, I don't know, Roost. Well, I've been there once. I think I remember that tree. <laughs> We'll see. There's a chicken coop somewhere out in these hills. We're going to find it one way or another. The old country. You can pretty much rest assured if you're cruising around with roost and you see any any old defunct looking corrals somewhere that looked like at one point in time they were glorious around the state. You can say, have you been there, roost? Oh, yeah, Bip, been there many times. Used to load out of there back in 77. No, not 77. Hungry? Well, good news, Army. Old Rooster's got some treats. All right. I'm still looking for the lightning tree, <clears throat> by the way. Haven't found it yet. Oh, Polly want a cracker? Polly want a cracker? <laughs> Looky there. Parrot Crick. Ah, that's the deal. Oh, look. East. East, yeah, and look right there. The old lightning tree. Wanna know what's real funny about that? Totally made that up. But, 
there happened to be a tree that kind of looks, uh, it kind of looks lightning-ish, ish. I don't know about Polly want a cracker, but pretty sure that Polly wants a road grader, because this road is not great. Not great. Farmy, have you lost any more teeth since we've been on this road? No. <laughs> no? Every time we go on a truck trip for anything, Army loses a tooth, so. Check out that old stack wagon. Old timer. Check out that old stack wagon. Old timer, Bruce. That's you. I'm talking about you. <laughs> We're going five miles an hour. I'm sorry for all the noise and rattles. Uh, yeah, you gotta be a little careful, eh? I'm starting to get around these old guys and they get a little bit touchy when you start talking about their age. And, like, man, I wonder what it was like to be around in the 60s. And they're like, what? <laughs> when that bail wagon came out, we thought that was a huge, unbelievable miracle improvement oh, on I stack. Bet. I can't even yes. imagine. See, that's the one thing that stinks about like our generation. Yeah, we get like some technology stuff like, cool, you can airdrop videos to each other. These guys got like, hey look, we don't have to stack 6,000 square bales by hand. Now we have this little stack liner that will do it. And we just won't ever get to see any of that in our day. We get to deal with all this screen technology. Yeah. It's not nearly as cool as machines, I'll tell you that. Also gonna teach you guys a little something about country living, all right? You drive, keep a hand on the wheel. Somebody comes down the road, what do you do? Give them the finger. Not the finger. The finger wave or the two finger. Sometimes this. I like to do this when I was in high school, I'd wind it up. Yay! What do you do, Roost? Do you have a, do you have a wave you do? Like a signature? I haven't even noticed. You too old and grumpy to wave these days? <laughs> anyway, I don't care how you do it but we need to bring back the wave. Cause it's alive and well out in these parts. <laughs> Another funny story for you quick while we're idling our way into the mountains. Um, we had a friend from California that moved out to Wyoming and uh, purchased some property and built a house and everything. And he called us up and wanted some fences built. So we took our fence wagon down to Wyoming um, and built some fence for him. And he comes out and he's telling us this story. He goes, you're not gonna believe what happened last week. I'm out here, we're building the house, and these people just show up. And they're like, hey. And I'm like, hey, what do you need? Why are you here? And they're like, oh, just saw you're building the house, wanted to come check it out. And he's like, they just came to just, they just drove in. And <laughs> you're like, well, let me teach you a little something about the country ways. You see something exciting going on down the road? It's pretty much open season. Like, you may as well just stand out front, you know, fill everybody in because people are going to come in. They're going to want to see what's going on. And you got to learn the ways of just being friendly. And not everybody's out to be in your business. It's just kind of like, here we are. It's the country. And this is, this is how we live. You get a new car, everybody's going to want to come see it, you know. You're building a barn, everybody's going to want to come stand inside of it. It's just the country way. That was Joe down in Sheridan. I remember when he called in and said that his neighbor's cows got in his place and he called <laughs> the sheriff and all this stuff. <laughs> oh man, he was, yeah, I think he's learned now. I think he's probably got settled in, but yeah, there's definitely some cultural changes that remember occur. He asked, what do we do when the neighbor's cattle get in? Oh, that's right. And I said, well, I'm actually glad when it happens. Uh -huh. Because sooner or later your cows are gonna get into their place. So I always am happy when the neighbor's cows get in. I just call them up and say, not a big deal, but if you're missing a few cows that are down here with ours. What goes around comes around. There's your lesson for the for the episode. Be nice and easy going. What goes around comes back to you. Oh, here it is. Found it. Found it. Found it. Yeah, I've just barely got in. So, <laughs> you guys can pull this out the window. So I pull a 48 foot lead trailer with a 28 foot pup. And this is the corner.
Not every trucker in the world would have made it, but this one sure did. Oh, baby. <laughs> There's Charlie horse head up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think I see the coop de loop. Should have brought my muck boots. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we got the roosts. We're gonna have room for all kinds of chickies in here. Land boxes, no more laying in my greenhouse boxes. More girls can just get right on in there. Wow. See that arm? That's for the, uh... come on in, bingers. This will be where the chickens will live from now on. See how it works? At nighttime, they'll come up here and roost on here so that nothing can get them. And then when it's time to let them out, pull up the door. Hey, look, you guys, where they can lay an egg in that thing right there. See that, bangers? Whoa. Think you can get eggs out of there? Yeah. What do you think, baby? <laughs> Transparent roof. Get a little sunshine in. So we're going to strap now because we can't go over the top with straps, otherwise we'll damage the roof and such. But it's on these skids. See these skidders? So we'll use our straps, go over this, over the skids, and that'll hold it downtown. Bada bing, bada boom. Going to do a little strap checkage here. I'll let you guys go ahead and say it. That's right. If you know, you know. Just. Maybe one click there. Looking good, Roost? Straps, nothing's running around. I'll have to watch that that doesn't come back. I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> oh, I said it. All right. We're about 10 feet wide. Should have just enough daylight to get back. Not sticking out very far. <laughs> Ain't nothing for an old trucker. It's a hamburger. Hi, Broca. Hi, Rookie. You want a corn dog? Uh, no, I want a I do. I want a Broca this big. You want meat with bones in it? Yeah. All right, meat with bones. Mm -hmm. Meat with bones. It would you guys believe me if I told you I paid $700 for this trailer? It's the truth. Bought it in an auction online. $700 in Nebraska. Pulled right home, no prop. One of these times we're gonna bring it in, do a little work. Clean it up a little bit. Give it a little paint. Anyway, I'm just checking all this stuff out because we're fixing to hit the big road. By big road, I mean the main two lane. <laughs> it's just kind of high profile. The wind's been raging. I think it's died off now. It's just kind of getting to be evening time, but everything looks sturdy and it doesn't appear to be shifting. So we're gonna roll with it. I feel like it's doing a slight shift. So when I'm hauling stuff and I really want to just know very closely, like I feel like something's maybe moving, but I'm not sure. I pick a spot and a point of reference. So right now this runner is just even with the metal edge. So we're gonna go down the roadways and then I'll stop and check it. And let's remember that. This front passenger side runner is just 
Just even with this edge, we'll see if it's, you know, if the wind's pushing it a little bit. I want two candies. Two? Yeah. Well, it's important you eat food first. Okay. We are we made it made it home right at dark we're on our little gravel road and we got a special request Bama and army want to ride inside the chicken coop the last little ways okay go ahead and get in there open that door I just hope you don't turn into a chicken while you're in there now you stay in there army don't open that door for nothing How did it go in here in the dock? Um, like, we're just dropping. What was the like in there? Um, a lot of rumbling. Was it kind of loud? Oh, the good old days, right? You guys remember that stuff? I told Bama to hang on to something, uh -huh. and she just grabs Army. <laughs> okay, left the two olders home. Oh, very good. Very good. Kiddos? Yeah. Watching a classic episode of. Boy Meets World, old school, I like it. Mm -hmm. How'd it go cleaning? Good. Yeah? Lash didn't do much. Lash didn't do anything? I did. <laughs> How about this bathroom? Did you get it all clean? Oh yeah, look at that sink. Clean as a whistle. Nice, clean the toilet. Oh yeah, you guys don't want to see my toilet. Our toilet, whatever, it's clean. Okay, great. All right, you all looked out. <laughs> nice job. What? You want to watch a TV show in here? Yeah. But what are you going to do when it's time for bed? Go to bed. You promise you'll turn it off? Yeah. And you won't be sad and stinky? No. Okay, then I guess we can watch a dollhouse show. Okay. It's Saturday night. No. Woohoo. I can turn on it. Okay. They're made specifically for watching movies? Yeah. Wow. They're nice and warm. Oh, warm and nice. And soft. Okay, well, do you know how to turn it on? You need some help. Uh, some help? Some help. Oh, we did some good stuff today, you guys. This is day number what without mama? I don't know. I'm losing track a lot. But guess what? Weed man, rabbit. Bam Bam, where you at, baby? Marnooch. We made it to church today, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were only five, what, five minutes late. That's pretty good for an old pop. <laughs> Nooch, what you got going here, buddy? A gun shop. A gun shop. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Looks like you're ready to go to Nerf battle. Oh. You the Nerf master? Mm-hmm. What? I can't believe we got that off without smudging anything. I thought for sure we we're gonna smear some of that wood or the trim somewhere, something to just step that thing off the back like that. It's, I don't know the exact dimensions, it's 10 wide by probably 12 long. 
and plenty high. I bet it's eight feet high at the at the pinnacle, top of the pitch of the roof there, whatever you call it. So anyway, we got it. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you the how we leveled it up here. So we kind of we live on this hill. Comes down off the ridge, slopes down, and it's flat for the driveway. And you can see the yard slopes off. You know, and the house is on a flat spot. We're getting ready to do a major project on the house too. A big garage over there and then a 40 by 40 addition out the other side over there. So so we can fit everybody in. Anyway, uh, back to this. So it's on this hill. So when we set it, well, I'll show you here. When we set the greenhouse, when I built the greenhouse, we set it, put a row of cinder blocks and set this one side of the greenhouse on cinder blocks. And I backfilled it all with wood chips, shavings, peelings, whatever. Anyway, it was clear up to the metal and the wind has blown so much this fall that it's just blown it all. So anyway, you kind of see how that works being on the hillside. See the runner over there? We didn't do that by the way. I think that was some of the tin they used. <laughs> After I'm telling you we didn't smudge anything. That was uh, that was definitely there. So I'm still blameless. Um, yeah, get down here. We got these little cinder block porch holders, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. We'll backfill and figure that out. Get her all squared away. See, chickens are cool to range around and just like run around and peck and eat stuff and do their thing. Like they are right now. They're just out there just pecking and doing their deal. But in the summertime, they want to hang around the house. They get on the porch and they poop all over the porch. And they'll go and just like plop down right in the middle of your flower beds and then start roosting out and they scratch everything up and your, your flower beds look trashy. And it just, everything just gets real smashed down. That's, if I had to describe what chickens do in a nutshell, it's that they just smash everything down. Now, if they would just range out and run out and be, be out there, I'd be fine. But for whatever reason, they're drawn to the house and they love to just be around the house. So, the, uh, you know, this time of year, it's not a big deal because everything's frozen and there's no flower beds to worry about and they stay away from the house. But when all the lush and the green and the flower beds are going, they're just like, oh, yeah, let's get in there. In the garden, they'll go get in the garden. So, it's kind of a weird thing to balance, but we'll put a little run out here. Probably just a rectangular run. And uh, that'll be where they spend their summer days, in the coop and out in the run. So, one more project down and done. So that'll be a surprise. So when Haley gets home, she's gonna have a washing machine that works. I'm getting the exhaust fan on the furnace fixed so it doesn't scream and squeal in the middle of the night. <laughs> Chicken coop moves in. <laughs> I never got to do I always had this stack. You never got to operate? No. How did you, that was probably Uncle Wayne probably that got to drive. Lyle. Lyle. <laughs> so I always had these callous hands from stacking. Because Roost has always had just beast hands. Just the old beast hands. Strongest hands. Not only strongest, but warmest. You could always count on Rooster's gloves to be about 112 degrees inside in the wintertime. If on a good day we could stack 3,000 bales. Jeez. It's a long old day, but it sure looked good. At the end of the day, you see that big old haystack. Oh, I bet. And then from there, from the sweep, it went to these little stack wagons. Yep. Uh, then the bigger stack wagons, and then to round bales, <laughs> then big squares. See, and it's funny for me because I remember, you know, we grew up around stack wagons, and I always thought they were cool, but you're like, man, all these little bales, we should get a round baler. <laughs> And they just, you know, they're just this evolution, but all those evolutions, like I say, they're, they're not things that we'll get to really experience much anymore. That whole mechanized revolution, pretty cool.